If you have spent any time watching fitness YouTubers, you'll have seen some of them trying on fat suits and making very entertaining videos about life with a little extra weight. But I know there's more to the dad bod experience than latex and extra large t-shirts, while ignoring that underneath, you still look like you've escaped from a boy band. Tell me why. So I thought I'd make my own video and get myself a genuine dad bod, constructed not from rubber, but weeks and weeks of calorie surplus. So buckle up with a seatbelt extender if you require it, and enjoy the 48 hours that I spent exploring the pros and cons of a physique you just can't buy on Amazon, and with a way more complicated returns policy. So here's the plan. I spent a lot of time last year pushing my fitness to its limit, so I've got a pretty good idea of what, in peak condition, I can do. Therefore, I was curious what impact would a dad bod have on me. To find out, I wanted to try one on for size, get a feel for it, maybe visit the gym, the track, put it under a little stress. So this week, I did just that. Lots planned over the next two days, and about to show you what I'm dealing with here. Uh, but first, the specs on this. 104 kilos, it's about 230 pounds. Uh, it's got a body fat percentage that is a long way from single digits. Uh, this model doesn't come with visible abdominals. Uh, it's got all the definition of a TV from 1987 and it's expensive to run. This cost me around five to 7,000 calories a day for the last six weeks, just keeping this thing fueled is a full-time activity. The only good news is that you can fuel it on anything you like. Uh, this is not fussy. So this is it. Uh, gonna stick up some footage of my regular body so you can see what eight kilos lighter looks like. Um, mm, no visible abs. There will be those that say that leaner body, my regular body, is a dad bod and stop making excuses for people to drift away from full-time six packs but let's be honest it is not the bod adopted by most fathers or indeed humans so by far the more common criticism is going to be that dad bods are bigger uh, and yes you can get you can get these in a larger model i could have gone for one of those instead here's my problem with that so i've had one of those larger ones in the past and I was never super comfortable with the idea of something so unhealthy being something that a dad can just have and everyone should be fine with it. Please think of the children! And then I am slightly reassured by my choice here because this is the model also used by guys like Jason Momoa, Gerard Butler, Ben Affleck and they then just bounce back into shape when a movie paycheck is coming. I don't touch a weight unless they're paying me to do it. And it's nice to know that can be done because I've got a photo shoot coming up in April to show how a great photographer can make your social media favorite look quite incredible. Uh, but the guy did say you still need to show up half decent. It's like you're photoshopped. And then the final reason why I didn't want to go any bigger than this is because of my wife. She said 104 kilos, but no more for this video. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to edit this recent holiday photo to make the colors pop a bit better. I said, that's a, a weird request. I can do that for you anyway. Uh, do you want me to print it out? And she said, no, no, she just might need it for her Tinder profile. I said, 104 kilos is it. So if there is anywhere that I'm gonna notice having to lug a bit more weight around, it's at the track. Weight is never more obvious than when you're trying to make it go quickly. Yes, science! I did quite a bit of track work last year. I got to the point where I was doing 400 meter repeats. So one lap, few minute rest, one lap, few minute rest. I was doing about one minute five, one minute sixes. So yeah, the plan is just to warm up and then have a little run around and see if I'm still able to do that. I would be very disappointed if I wasn't breaking 110 quite comfortably but we will see. Okay, already something that is very evident is that I have more on me. It feels like a suit. I can feel my, my midsection and my chest just bouncing up and down. It's not helped by the fact that I've got the t-shirt on underneath that I was wearing when I was running last year and it's tight and looked quite cool last year. Now it just feels uncomfortable. I'm not sure how it looks, but I don't think it'll look very pretty. So I'm gonna put on a baggy t-shirt. 
Last year I was running around this thing shirtless, hoping people would see me. Ego turned up to 11. I'm now looking around just to make sure there's no one here before I change shirt for five seconds. Just done my kind of moderate fast lap. Horrible, horrible. Everything's moving in ways it shouldn't. I'm carrying weight on my back. It's weird, that moving up and down. It's almost like I feel like I've been punched in the, in the kidneys or something. It feels horrible. Do you know what my plan was to do like, a, like the workout I would be doing last year, four laps with a few minutes rest in between each one and see if I could hold on to those sort of 105, 106s. I have a feeling I might just do one. We'll see what I do. If I go comfortably under 110, like comfortably under, I'll do some more. One minute 12, dead. Going along the back straight, I feel good. I feel big, heavy, but I also feel powerful. And then, oh man, suddenly it hit me. It felt like running with a rucksack on or something. It horrible and, and it gets worse because coming down the last 100 meters, the last 70 meters certainly, I mean, I was just dying, absolutely dying. I was smoked at the end. Be interesting to do a longer run 5k, drop the pace. How long does that bouncing last before it becomes really annoying? Oh, that was grim. Oh. Home. Right, horrible track session over. Gym is next. First, just got to walk the dog. Thermoregulation. Okay, here's how it works. I'm outside in the cold, in my double layer winter jacket, perfect. I start walking, two minutes later, I'm cooking, I'm boiling now, got a t-shirt on underneath, that's all, which is too tight. I, I had this when I used to be stupid big. I would spend all my winters sweating and then all my summers sweating even more. It's permanently hot. It, it's as though the body struggles to regulate temperature when you cover it up in stuff it shouldn't really be covered up in dude that you can't carry you're welcome to carry a stick but that's a tree i'm at the gym and i'm driving over here haven't gone in yet and i'm thinking is the dad bod really going to make much difference here i'm fairly optimistic that i'm going to walk into this place and i'm doing an upper body session today and it's going to just kind of be fine and literally as i'm parking i'm suddenly realizing why it is going to be different too silly right i'm back and exactly what i thought would be the problem was the problem it was horrible but nothing to do with my body as such it's my head i've got dad bod head okay the workout was fine here's the problem let's go back when i first started working out years and years and years ago i would walk into a gym and i hated it I, I i wouldn't even look into the mirrors i would i would worry that every single person in there was looking at me and thinking what a loser what's he doing here and then when i got in shape i realized that no one's looking at anybody else i mean it's ridiculous I, last year i'd be coming home from the gym jen would say was it busy I, I don't even know i didn't even pay attention to whether there was one person in there or a hundred no idea i'd have probably spotted a hundred but I didn't care. And I thought, oh, this would be quite useful if I ever talk to someone that's overweight and saying they hate going to the gym because of how people are looking at them, or if I ever find myself back in that place. I'll remember. No one's looking. I walk into there, and I'm thinking everyone's looking. Everyone's looking and thinking, that guy looks like he's had too much to eat over Christmas. And there's mirrors everywhere in there. Um, I'm thinking everyone's looking at me. I say everyone. The place is pretty much empty. I do not look athletic anymore, so it's just horrible. I did not feel like I belong. And of course I do. I mean, being an idiot, being a big baby. And I should probably just quickly add, anybody thinking, what are you talking about? You're not that big. How can you, you know, you're kind of making a mountain out of a molehill. I understand. The point is, it takes so little to screw with your head. Yeah, it is very, very easy to... Uh, put hurdles in front of yourself that just don't need to be there. Very, very easy. 
Today's challenge is the one that I've not been looking forward to, the five kilometre run. I mean, I got myself in shape originally by using runs around 5k in length, park run, stuff like that. So I know it's quite possible to run heavy. I did just fine. Um, but it's not as much fun as running when you're lighter. Uh, Nixon, unfortunately, also going to suffer a bit. He hasn't had his regular shave down. He is looking like a little furry sheep right now. So he's going to start off warm and cook. So we both have similar problems to deal with. Although he's not fat, so not quite the same. Are you ready? Okay, it's kilometer to one, 410. Don't feel too bad, apart from all the bouncing. One K to go. The dog demonstrating how hot he is. Okay, we're done. 21, 21, 20. I don't know. It's not a slow, slow time. And there were, there were years where I have, couldn't have dreamt of running under 22 minutes. But it's, it's slower than normal. And not only is it slower than normal, it just feels, oh. Like when I did my 1830, I did in training during the summer, no, autumn. I came off of that and then hit the ski erg for 10 minutes. I'm a kilometer from home. I'm tempted to phone Jen to come and get me. Right, I've just realized the best way to describe how I feel about all of this stuff. Here's how it sums it up perfectly. I walk into the bathroom this morning, look in the mirror. First thing I do in the day. And it's, it's what I've got used to doing over the last six months, walking in there, looking at myself in the mirror and thinking, yeah, looking looking all right looking forward now to a day of maintaining this above average at least 50 year old body i walk in this morning look in the mirror and i just think it's a shame and that just sums it up i'm not looking in the mirror and thinking oh my goodness you disgusting blob of a man because i'm not i'm not i'm just thinking hmm I know what that can be with not much extra work. So it's a shame. Okay, I got a jog because I'm freezing. I'm not sure I'm ready for anything. Dog is always. Watch this. Nixon, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Time for the last test. And I've no idea how this one's going to go. I am on Alp de Zwift. Um, if you've not used Zwift, it's online cycling world. Think uh, a Counter-Strike with Lycra. That's the back end. This is the bell end. There is a mountain on it, Alp de Zwift. I have climbed it previously in under an hour. And that's regarded as being reasonably competent. I'm gonna ride up it now. Not in a million years will I go under the hour for two reasons. One, you have to tell Zwift how heavy you are. And the minute you tell it you are 104 kilos, basically causes your cyclist to go very slow when he's going uphill, as he would in real life. Uh, the other problem is that I'm not cycle fit right now. Uh, the, all the training I did last year was pretty much for high rocks. So I'm not, I'm not kind of fit for this. To be honest, if I'm an hour 20, if I'm under that, I'll be delighted. It took me 10 minutes to cycle to the beginning of the hill and that just about killed me. I'm dripping with sweat. I'm gonna put both the fans on, gonna open the window. I've got my fluids, electrolytes. I've also applied lots of lube. Uh, this body, this heat, this challenge has the potential to be a chafing disaster. I want to start burning this body off, but not literally layer of skin at a time. Okay, just over 16 minutes in. This hill has 21 corners. I've just started corner 15 and dying. Okay, just gone through halfway, roughly in 30, just under 38 minutes. That puts me on track for one hour 16, but that is not going to happen. I am absolutely dying here, absolutely dying. I have no idea. I have no idea if I'm going to finish it, to be honest. Okay, sprint to the top. 700 meters to go. I'm not going to break 80 meters, 80 minutes. 
I'm on 78 already, but but we are not slowing down. Not now. Let's go. Eighty two minutes ish. What I need to do is take this discomfort, which is extensive, and every time I'm on the sofa watching telly, I think I'll have another snack. I need to experience this. I need to be able to take a discomfort experience, and it would remind me to. I'd probably still eat the snack. 48 hours, what did I learn? Well, I learned that dad bod was less physically able than my fit dad bod, but not massively so, and actually still pretty above average in many ways. In fact, I could happily live with it. I would need to get a lighter winter coat, and I'd probably regret it come summer, but it wasn't all negative. I'm still in okay shape for 50. I can whiz around a park run. Eating out without calorie counting is lovely. In fact, the only concern I have about this body is that it's too close to my old body. I can easily imagine from here slipping backwards and to steal inspiration from the wire, I know I have plenty of donuts left in me, but I'm not sure I have another obesity recovery left in me. So my biggest motivator to return quickly to my fit body, aside from that photo shoot coming up, is to put some daylight between me and how I used to be. In fact, one of the reasons I wear permanently too tight t-shirts is that when they become ridiculously too tight and I have to resort to dark colors only, I'm reminded to go no further backwards. So if you are exactly where you wanna be, congratulations, enjoy it. But if you're not, understand that there might be a place between your current state and what social media tells you is ideal. And you might find that place pretty cool anyway. Consequently, your journey might not be quite as hard as you envisage. And also know that worrying about how you look and how other people are looking at you is 100% normal. It's 100% not necessary to do, but it's normal. Right. That's it, I'm back into training immediately. I should point out, if you wanna suggest that rapidly gaining weight and then intending to lose it again is not the healthiest or indeed safest thing to be doing, I'd agree, but also point out that YouTube might have a few more riskier activities taking place to turn your attention to before the old bloke in pink shoes. The only real risk I'm worried about is delaying my comeback and then accidentally adding a couple more kilos on. Just in case that happens, I should probably edit that photo for Jen one more time. 